What's going on everybody? I'm Selma Kim, America's face of dating, and today we have an absolute banger for you guys, transforming from Mr. Nice Guy, a guide to dating quality. And in case you guys are new to my channel, I get guys that are coming in every single day that are new. They might need some help, they're looking for some guidance. I help guys who have been out of a divorce or a breakup, or really you just wanna get back into the dating game and attract a quality partner. I help you guys actually do that. And so, let's talk about how to transform from Mr. Nice Guy in case you guys are that nice guy, and maybe you got rejected or a girl dumped you or left you, maybe even went through a divorce because of that reason. Let's jump right into it. But this is for guys who have good income and pretty cool hobbies. They do cool things like travel, but girls are the last missing piece. This is for those types of men right there. And I'll explain why in a second. But nice guys, they seek validation. They're nice to get something in return. They want to be liked, right? They are nice because they're trying to be liked in return, right? They're being nice to people and they're afraid to say no because they want the other person to like them. This causes other people to see through that and see that you are just manipulating them in a way. And they're afraid to say no, like I just said, and especially have low self-esteem, right? People with high self-esteem, they care in a sense of like what other people think about them, but they don't care so much to where it's like they literally will change themselves completely or put on a completely different mask and show someone a completely different side of them just to get someone to like them. That's the difference between a confident person and a nice guy, as you would say. So if you're ready to attract a quality woman, let's dive in. You need to take care of you first, by the way, with your confidence, to destroying bad habits and rebuilding you. That is most important. We're gonna start with that right now. So number one, you need to take care of you first, right? As I just said, you need to take care of you first with your confidence, destroying bad habits and rebuilding you. That is one of the most important pieces you could do right here is taking care of you first. You need to put your health and your purpose first, right? You need to come first, right? It doesn't mean that, you know, let's say like you have a wife one day and she's pregnant, right? And she's, her water just breaks. You know, you gotta take her to the hospital and you're not like, whoa, whoa, baby, like, you know, just give me 30 minutes, hold that baby in there. I gotta go make a green drink. I gotta go take care of me first, right? And then I'll take care of you. Like there's exceptions, right? 80% of the time, you're gonna wanna follow this is that you put your health and your purpose first. Is that over time, it should map out to about 80% of the time you're putting you first. Nice guys, people that get walked all over, they are only putting themselves first probably like 10% of the time, if that even, 10 to 20%. You need to flip that to about 80% and you're gonna see that your confidence rises significantly because of that. The moment that you put the girl first before these things, you will lose, right? I'm not saying, like I said, there's exceptional cases, but the moment that you literally put the girl consistently before all of your needs, because she's like, oh, I need this, I need that, uh, and she's like, oh, like, give me a ride. You're not even dating her yet, let's say. Like, I have a guy in my program that he originally joined my program because he spent $50,000 furnishing an entire girl's apartment building, and he wasn't even dating her. He just really wanted her, and so he was being nice to please her. This is how extreme dream that habit can come out is that if you have a lot of money and you're too nice, you're just gonna blow the money on her because she needs money, right? She's beautiful, she's hot, and you've got money, but you're just so nice and you want her to like you. So you're gonna just spend more and more money and then eventually it's like, you look at your fucking taxes that year and you're like, what the fuck, I spent 50K? What the hell was I thinking? <laughs> she's dating some other guy now. So, so many nice guys put themselves last. They put their finances last. They're doing all these favors and this lowers your confidence long-term, right? Why does this lower your confidence long-term? It's because, <sighs> When you are doing all of these favors, not because you necessarily want to do them, but you're doing them to get the person to like you, you are basically saying that how you are at a core, your root foundation, she's not gonna like you for who you are. Therefore, you have to change and mold yourself into this person that you think she'll like. Therefore, you start doing all these things that you think are gonna win her over because you're basically saying who you are at a core, you don't believe people are gonna like. Chances are because maybe you got divorced, maybe you went through a breakup, maybe people rejected you. I don't know the case, maybe you were bullied like me and it causes you to be really, really nice. I don't know. All I'm telling you is that that is why you're doing it. That's why it's lowering your confidence. If you're still going through a divorce, it's not settled yet. You have a lot of lawyer fees, X, Y, Z. Do not fucking date yet. Do not jump back into it, man. Take care of that shit first. Especially do not date yet if you were broke, struggling check to check. You're a fucking cheap ass. You won't be able to date if you're worried about paying for a date. I say this all the fucking time, but it's just so true. You will not be able to date a chick. A chick is just not gonna wanna date you if you're worried about paying for a date. And if cheap guys are listening to this, cheap guys will be like, it's always about the fucking money with women. There are probably people watching that right now like, fuck, I just said that in my head. <laughs> it's not always about the fucking money. But for women, it's like they naturally, they want to be taken care of, and especially nice, feminine, sexy, supportive, trustworthy women. They want to be taken care of. They want to feel like their man is that guy that can do that shit, that can take care of her. It doesn't mean you have to actually take care of her, but it's like paying for a date. It's like, you should be doing that as a guy, bro. Like, let's fucking get real for a second. Like, if you come to the date, remember my girlfriend, my girlfriend's twin sister, 
sister says she went on a date before she was in a relationship and this was about years ago probably i didn't even know them yet she said that she went on a date with this guy and this guy he goes to the date and he's like so you brought money right basically saying like you're gonna cover your half and she was like i never went out with that dude again <laughs> i didn't give him shit and i was like i don't blame you sis i don't fucking blame your ass i would not do it either man so no girl's gonna match complete you you have to put in the work on yourself there's no fucking way around it you need to put the work in on yourself if you want to change this stuff number two develop confidence women see what you show them before joining my program this is a picture of my program from Blake, put it with a cool background, but this is a screenshot of my Slack channel. And before joining my program, Blake was being friend zoned, right? Can't say nice guy without being friend zoned. <laughs> it was because what he was showing the girl. Literally, he came to my program because he's like, dude, like, there was these girls that I knew back in college, and it's like, it seemed like the girls that I wanted, I couldn't ever talk to and like flirt with effectively. And the girls that I don't want, it seemed to always go well with them, but I didn't want them. <laughs> and so I was like, dude, like, it's literally because women see what you show them, right? And so it's like the girls that you place in your head head and you're just like, oh, that's the girl that I want right there. I would definitely fuck her. Or like, oh, I would definitely want to be in a relationship with her X, Y, Z. You are subconsciously changing the way that you talk to them because you are worried about what they're going to think about you. And like, you have placed them in this box in your head that's like, I would versus I would not. And the girls that I would not with, it's very easy to talk to them because you've already established and put the frame on in your head that you don't want them. Versus the girls that I would, all the girls that you basically say I would and you're nervous around is because there's really like a root problem. There's like a root issue. Maybe you asked other girl back in the day, you got rejected or maybe you were trying to get with a really hot chick that you thought was amazing just sexy and the girl that you wanted and then she still rejected you literally now that has impacted you in the way that you talk to the girls that you place in the I would category because you're like oh like she's gonna be just like that girl that rejected me this is subconscious you're not consciously thinking this but now like you're acting from that perspective that like oh shit she's probably gonna reject me and so now you start being too nice and you start overcompensating for a belief that you have in your head that's just not even fucking real they're all different women but you're still placing them in these categories and so you you need to place every single woman in the I would not category until she proves herself to be that fucking awesome chick. It doesn't matter if she's hot, dude. What if you were talking to that chick and you placed her in the I would and then you found out that she's had sex with a thousand different men? Would she still be in the I would category? Probably not. Some of you thirsty ass motherfuckers are probably like, oh, I'd still fucking do it. But no, like the majority of the average answer is going to be like, whoa, move her over to the I would not. Now it's easier to talk to her, right? So that's how you need to be thinking about this stuff. And you, dude, you got to commit to change this stuff like I did if you want to actually date quality because quality attracts quality and I'll explain what that means in a second but you gotta develop natural attraction you have to develop natural attraction there's no other way around it most guys don't know this stuff and understanding the art of attracting women is essential like you have to understand that stuff dating problems will always exist if you don't know natural attraction if you don't have the right action steps right it doesn't matter like you need a strategy that's the most important part of your life if I tell you I'm just like I want you need to see a sunrise right you need to see a sunrise in the next 24 hours and then you start driving west not a good strategy right? Because sun rises in the east. Why are you driving in the west? Like, that's what a lot of you guys' problems are. I'm like, you want a quality relationship, but you're driving fucking west. You don't have the right action steps. Therefore, you're never going to get there because you're going that way. You're going the wrong way. Most of you guys are doing that shit. Many men, like myself included, have fallen into the trap of being overly nice and seeking validation, which ultimately repels women due to the lack of intrigue, lack of mystery, right? You guys are driving west when you're being the nice guy. If you want a quality relationship, why are you being counterproductive? You're just fucking yourself. Literally, this is me back in 2017. Nice guy, you can see it in my fucking eyes. I was too fucking nice. I was not confident in myself. I had a good smile, I admit that, man. But I was not fucking confident, right? Like, maybe some of you guys would be like, man, you still look confident, man. But to me, I'm just like, nah, dude, I look way too fucking nice, man. I was too fucking nice. I was insecure. I had a lot of fucking problems going on, man. And I was with some friends that were just not good people, just bad habits, too. And I was very insecure. I was in a relationship at the time, and literally, I was about a month or two away from being dumped, basically. <laughs> it's because I was too fucking nice, a lot of insecurities. What happens is that if you're a nice guy and you still can get a relationship, eventually there's going to be some toxicity that starts to inject itself in the relationship because you start to realize, why am I being this way, right? I'm not myself. So you start to try to take that power back and the girl's like, it's too fucking late for that, buddy. Like you've already showed me this side of you and it's like, if you try to take the power back, you basically fuck up the entire relationship. And so that's kind of what happened. Then dude, relationship falls apart. Girl dumps me. Insecurities were being leaked out. And I was like, man, I got to make some major fucking changes on myself. I cut off all these friends. Like get the fuck out of here. Like I don't want you guys in my life. I need 
need to figure something out with myself. Literally seven years later, I'm in my dream relationship now. Wrote a best-selling book. Oh, I wrote this best-selling book, man. You guys should read this book, by the way. It's a pretty thick boy, but literally all the guys in my program have read this book. They're just like, dude, I read this book in like a day. <laughs> there was some guy that actually just joined. I was on the beach in Puerto Rico, and then he was like, hey, man, can you send me the payment link for your program? I was like, sure, dude. He, he ended up paying. We got him in the program. He was flying back from Dubai. He's like, dude, I read your book in like that flight back from Dubai. I was like, what, 13, 14 hour flights? Like, I read the whole fucking thing, dude. I was like, that boy, man. It's fucking awesome, bro. But literally, like in my dream relationship now, swimming with dolphins in Mexico, demonstrating vulnerability often backfires with women as their attention is largely influenced by the qualities you present to them. Again, women see what you show them. If you show them nice guy behaviors, I don't care what you say, you're driving west. If you want to see a sunset, you need to go east, right? You need to develop natural attraction. That is driving in the right direction, having the right strategy with this stuff. And so if you guys need help with natural attraction, actually how to talk to women and flirt with women effectively, maybe you've been out of a divorce or a breakup and you want to do my program, right? You want to actually fix this stuff. There's a call link in the description below. Book in a call with me. Let's talk. Let's get you onboarded in the program on that call. Let's not fuck around. It's time that you change this stuff. Especially, make sure that you're serious, right? If you're not really serious, keep watching my YouTube videos. You'll get serious pretty fast if you just keep seeing testimonial after testimonial. But if you guys are serious, been watching my YouTube, you've read my book, XYZ, and you want to do my program, book in that call or message me on Instagram. We'll get you going in the program pretty quickly if we think it's a win-win, if it's a good fit. Make sure you comment down below questions that you might have about future videos. I'm Sonic Kim, America's Face, updating, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.